today at Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at a few more balancing toys. In this case, they turn. So let's get started. First up are my Tweety Boppers. Two blocks of wood and a coat hanger bent to the shape to support it in the center. I can simply balance it on top of the soda bottle, as we see here. I can get it to rock back and forth. I can also give it a little bit of spring action. So here we see a little bit of harmonic motion taking place. We can also see a little bit of resonance as the motion changes from rocking back and forth to bouncing in and out towards the bottle. But what's a little bit more fun is if you take these and you put them on your head and balance it on your head or you can keep your head stationary and have these rotate Okay, Brad, turn underneath it. It's the inertia of the blocks that help keep them from turning. How would it be different if we used styrofoam balls instead of wooden blocks? With this piece, I have a little dowel rod that has two holes drilled on an angle for it. And the pencils are going to slip into either side. There's one. And here's the other one. Now that dowel is sharpened a little bit, and I can stick it on top of this upright pencil, and there it bounces. Now the question to investigate is why objects bounce. If I start with a simple pencil and put it on this wooden block, we see that it bounces. We're supporting that pencil's center of mass. In this case, it's right in the middle of the pencil. This position is also known as its center of gravity. The torques on each side of that position are trying to turn the pencil in opposite directions. Because they're equal, the pencil balances. In some cases, the center of mass isn't actually located directly on the object. So here's the approximate location of the center of mass for these pencils. Center of mass is down here, and we're supporting directly above it, and that's where it bounces. If we go back to the Tweety Boppers for a moment, the center of mass is located about here, and we support it directly above it. Now, what happens if I make one of the pencils shorter? I'll take this one off and replace it with this shorter one. We're actually going to shift that center of mass over to about this position here. Now I'll put it back on the pencil support. The pencils adjust themselves so the support is directly above the center of mass. In a future investigation, we'll look at how to locate the center of mass in various objects, and then we'll record some interesting photographs by illuminating the center of mass and other positions and tossing the objects in the air. Now here's a set of balancing bees, or yellow jackets. When I put them on this coiled wire, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> the pitch of the coil is steep enough that the wire slides down it and turns the bees in the process. Here's the wire that connects the two bees. They were drawn, colored, and then glued onto heavy stock paper. I used hot glue for the body parts, a nut, and the support wire that goes to the opposite side. 
Here's a better view of how the wire was bent to make the legs and the antennae. This coil was made with 10 gauge copper wire. It's fairly flexible and it was easy to make. I simply wrapped it around a piece of PVC pipe. I attached it to the wooden base and then kept stretching that coil until I finally got the bees to turn. Alright, next we have these two airplanes that are wired together. As you can see, they balance very nicely. Now let's put them on top of this bottle. And give them a spin. Flying level, but we can also get them to rock at the same time. Let me give this one a... There we go. The center support rests on top of this metal cap, and it's indented slightly to hold it better. I started by printing out two identical pictures, glued them to mat board for more support, and then cut them out with scissors. I used a thin piece of wire to make the propeller, added a nut and the long balancing wire, and all three of these were glued to the undercarriage of the plane using hot glue. If you make this, make sure the planes are both headed in the right direction. When I first made this, I had one of the planes going backwards. Here we can see a good view of that center balancing point. Here's a top view of the plane. As you can see, I've added a little car to it. Now let's see it spin one last time. Now I am impressed with how long this will keep spinning after I give it just a small push. Uh, there's not a lot of friction between the wire and the cap, so it'll actually spin for a couple minutes. Now I do have one other airplane, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, once again, we have a uh, position here where the whole thing will balance. And in this case, it's an airplane, but this one's going to be powered. Airplanes on this side, there's wires that come over to this side and attach them here and let's take a look. This project starts with a small electric motor and a propeller. The plane's body is made out of either 10 or 12 gauge copper wire, which is available at either building supply stores or hardware stores. Now this wire is easy to bend, so it's very easy to shape it into the form of the airplane. The ends of the wire are used to hold the motor and propeller in place. I used electrical tape and simply wrapped it around the ends of the wires and the motor body several times as tightly as I could. The support wire is made by straightening out a coat hanger. It's attached to the plane with a few pieces of tape, stretches over to the soda bottle where it has a small bump to it added as the pivot point and supports a battery holder and D-cell battery on the opposite side. Wires from the motor are extended over to the battery holder and the motor is turned on with a simple loop switch.
Well, I hope you enjoyed these balancing toys, and I have some more coming up in the near future, so come back and see me again. Okay, bye.